Welcome and thank you for joining us uh, in our webinar today with QuickTag. My name is Brad Vorbeck. I work in marketing here at Turnkey Technologies and I've got Mary Miller with us today and Sean Fitzgerald as well. And they're going to be taking us through the main presentation, which is focused on um, a solution that we think is going to be particularly useful for some of our GP customers who have multi-entity operations or especially are using binary stream multi-entity management product. Um, QuickTag has a new solution for accounts payable that integrates directly with that product and allows you to streamline your accounts payable or operations across your multi-entity organizations. So we're excited to share this new product with you today. Um, I'm going to cut to the chase today. I think most people here are turnkey customers and are already aware of kind of what we do. So I'm going to kind of hand it off to uh, Mary or Sean here shortly. Um, just know that the webinar is being recorded so that if you have any questions or if there's anything you miss, you can certainly rewatch it. Um, and we'll be sending that out to you tomorrow in a follow-up email. And um, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them on the GoToWebinar panel in the questions section. And we'll have a Q&A section at the end where we will get those answered. And then our contact information, if you do have any further questions after the webinar, will be on that email as well. So you can feel free to contact us anytime to learn more. Uh, so that being said, thank you again for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to uh, Mary. Excellent. Thanks, Brad, and welcome, everyone. It is my pleasure and my colleague, Sean, who uh, are on your team today that are going to be walking you through this discussion and demonstration. And as Brad mentioned, it's our goal to kind of dive right in. I've got just a couple of, of slides I'm going to give you as background content. And then Sean and I are going to uh, demonstrate various aspects of the QuickTag solutions for you. So this is us. Sean hates when I show this slide, so I'm not going to spend any more time on it. But just so you know, <laughs> that's who we are. <laughs> if you want to say good morning to everyone, Sean. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks, Sean. So, all right, why are we here together? What, we're here because there's challenges in your AP process, even though you're using multi-entity management from binary stream. There's still probably paper. There's still, as research indicates on the slide in front of you, there's still probably manual routing of invoices for approval. You might be doing some double data entry, potentially, depending on when you get information in from your vendors and then when accounting actually gets the chance to uh, enter that content, that data into uh, your ERP system, GP in this case, for the most part. Um, and because the majority of invoices are still received in paper format are the you know part of the main problem that's driving this need to to really automate and really fully leverage the binary stream multi-entity management by adding AP automation to that. So here are the challenges that are kind of driving us to go down this path. And certainly you can relate probably to some of these others, missing invoices, late payments, lost invoices, that kind of thing. Well, why don't you might be thinking if this is, you know, it makes such a, a perfect story, right? It fills out your automation and efficiency. Why don't organizations go down this path? The number one reason, friends, that we find, and maybe you can relate to this, is the lack of budget. Well, what we also learned during the course of, you know, discovery and kind of really taking a consultative approach, especially by tag teaming with our partner at Turnkey and your partner at Turnkey, is that we will help you understand that the current processes really do create inefficiencies and frustrations and really help you tell that story and build the ROI. We, in fact, we have a tool that is uh, specifically designed to help you see the ROI. And most of our customers see ROI within six months and at the most 12 months from having implemented uh, this type of solution. So if that's kind of your struggle, if you can relate to some of these barriers on the slide here, definitely let's, let's have a conversation about that. We can help you build the business case uh, with the ROI tool. And keep these data points in mind as you tell that story and build your business case as well. Those delays, those lost invoices, the paper invoices that are still coming, there's a cost, a true dollars and cents cost associated with that. You can see on the slide in front of you, according to industry research, you can go from 45 days down to five days, sometimes even less, depending on the level of automation, when you go from processing everything manually to processing with an automation solution, an AP automation solution in place. And the cost associated with that, the dollars and cents, can go from around $15 if there's a combination of invoices coming in via paper and email to your organization. By the way, if you're doing 100% paper, that goes up to about $23.60 
per invoice, again, you can do the math. Use this information as you're building your business case. And you can take that cost down to $2.36 in your you know, fully automated, fully innovative um, approach. So we're gonna show you some examples, some, some tips and tricks, if you will, in our demonstration today of how you can automate your accounts payable process, leveraging the binary stream mem product. Now, if you don't have mem product in place today, that's okay. You can certainly, uh, you know, figure out how this can apply in your organization. But if you are using mem, that's the version that we're going to demonstrate for you uh, in today's session. So we're going to talk about how invoices come into a common queue, and so that's what you're looking at on my screen right now. Is a, a queue where accounts payable, the team, right, could share it. Maybe it's one person, maybe it's two people, maybe it's five people, right? They come in every day right now to a stack of papers that are the invoices that they need to process for the day. Well, fast forward to automation, these invoices are now going to come in in a digital format waiting to, if you're familiar with quick tag lingo, waiting to be tagged. So that's the step that we're going to take a look at. Sean, just a quick screen check. You can see um, ProClient. Yes, that's what, I'm, yep, that's what I'm looking at. Perfect, perfect. So we're going to start down this journey. We've received, and I used to be an AP manager, I know what this is like to come into all of the paper sitting on your desk. It's a little bit draining. Um, but we're now going to come into a digital queue of invoices that need to have workflow kicked off. So no longer is somebody going to have to walk this over. Now, let me just clarify. If this invoice still came in in the mail, you scan it into QuickTag, it lines up in the same queue. But if it comes in digitally, don't hit the print button, just forward it or upload it or what, you know, whatever process works best for you to get the invoices into the system here. So you can see I've got several invoices here sitting in my digital queue that need to be routed for coding sometimes, sometimes approval, and have to have various things done to them before the invoice and the payable transaction get to GP. Now, we're going to follow a simple path. I simply right click and I'm going to choose a workflow path option in your environment. Those workflow paths might just be one. You might not have to choose. So you might just click on the invoice. It'll come straight into this environment. Now, because as I mentioned, my invoice automation process here is set up with binary stream already enabled. That's the path that we're going to take a walk down. But it's really important to know here that our QuickTag solution, our QuickTag system here is real-time connected to GP. What does that mean? It means from a company, entity, department, GL codes, all of your vendors are real-time being fed from GP, which saves a ton of time in and of itself. Just like as you think about the value that binary stream adds in the company ID field alone, I've got Fabricam, of course, selected here, our favorite uh, GP company. Um, if you were logging in and out of multiple companies before, you added binary stream, great. Now you only have to do it once. Now QuickTag is going to leverage that and pull in the facility and the department IDs right here inside of QuickTag and what we call the professional client. As you can see, it looks and feels just like GP. That's why we call it the GP Pro Client. So we have decided that we have an invoice here for Fabricam company, which we can clearly see on the invoice, it's addressed to Fabricam. We're going to go ahead and select the facility. Again, real-time connected to GP. We'll just select facility 100. Then we'll come down and do a department. We'll say this is for department 2. And then as this invoice gets routed through the process, we will then have the opportunity to, I'm going to just do a quick type ahead here, we will have the opportunity to segment the GL codes such that this cost can be applied across multiple entities or departments, depending on how your business operates and how you need to process those invoices. And I'm going to grab a, the invoice number here. A simple copy and paste is going to get it done for us. Put that in there. And then I'm going to put the total amount of $4,700 in the purchases field. Now, again, real-time connected to GP, so are my GL distributions. I pulled the default GL distributions in from the vendor card in GP automatically here into the QuickTag Pro Client, just virtue of our connection with the system. But let's remember, I've got my accounting hat on, right? I'm the AP person. I might not know how this cost of these tablets that we're purchasing maybe for an event or something um, needs to be allocated. 
maybe it needs to go to two or three different departments. Well, I'm going to submit this to the next person in the workflow that's responsible for reviewing that. So I'm going to say, please distribute GL codes. So I'm telling the approver, I, know, I don't need to write this on the piece of paper, I'm telling the approver in my workflow comments, here's what I expect you to do with it. And then I'm going to submit this, and it's going to send this invoice on its way. Now, I did that on purpose. I knew that I was going to get a warning message here because what GP and QuickTag do in combination with each other is QuickTag is doing a duplicate check with QuickTag and within GP. Now, this warning is telling me that this number exists in QuickTag. Well, that means that it's probably sitting in somebody's queue for review and approval. But if this invoice was already in GP, that warning would have turned red. It would not allow me to submit this invoice for processing because, of course, we don't want duplicate invoice numbers inside of GP. So we give it a unique identifier. We submit this invoice. AP team doesn't need to run to the printer to do the next invoice, doesn't need to run around the building to any other you know, scanners or approvers offices. They just simply work through the rest of their queue down the list. Okay, So we're going to now move to the next step in the process. We clicked Submit in AP. Our job with this invoice is done. We have started the workflow. We're sending this invoice to a reviewer and approver, who in this case is in our online environment that we call KTX. So I've already logged in here, so I skipped the login screen for you. I'm sure you can appreciate the time savings of that. <laughs> and, and we now have the invoice that we just submitted for review and approval waiting in our quick tag queue. So let's say I'm the department manager and I'm going to open this invoice for edit purposes and I'm going to uh, take the action of reviewing these GL codes. Okay, So I can see, by the way, if I wanted to see the history in the comments, I simply click on that workflow history and look, I can see Mary told me, please distribute the GL codes. Great. Okay. I know what I got to do. So again, we leverage the real-time connection to GP with QuickTag and I click on the GL codes and I come down here and I add another row because the whole point here, right, is we've got multiple entities that we need to distribute this cost across. So I'm going to go ahead and put in um, another GL code here that is related to this invoice and, um, and we'll uh, distribute the amount as well. So I come over to my amount field. We're going to say it's 2700 here. We're going to change this one to be 2000 and I could continue to add until my heart's content across, oops, apparently I didn't uh, click tab off that. Okay, of course my totals still have to match. I could distribute the, this between as many GL codes, as many departments as I need to, but again, leveraging those different entities and departments and facilities that are specific to my binary stream MEM setup, okay? So I've told this invoice that we're gonna charge half of it to this department, half of it to this department, and I'm done with that. And I say, okay, well, maybe I need to tell the next person, please approve, um, if I could spell. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and submit the invoice. Then now we can see that the original invoice came in for facility 100, department 2, but I did my job as the editing approver to segment those codes, add the additional entities, and now send it for final review and approval. So we'll just do another quick refresh here. And simulating that final approval could be your CFO, could be your controller, could be somebody back in finance that does a final approval as well. This invoice, again, same invoice that we've been routing. There it is for us to look at. And now we can review the GL codes as the final approver. We want to see the workflow history and comments to see if anybody's said anything specific to us. And we now have the option to approve reject or delegate. Like I could send this to Sean and say, hey, Sean, this is your budget, not mine. Um, if I reject it, I'm sending it back to accounting, telling them, of course, what's wrong with it. Maybe I didn't like the way it was coded. Something needs to be updated. Or, of course, I can go ahead and approve it. And comments here are optional, but we'll go ahead and put some in just for fun to follow it along. And now that invoice is out of our workflow. So no longer the days and weeks, remember that 45 days we talked about that on average a paper invoice goes through from end to end receipt to payment. We've now gone through um, three of those steps from coding to editing and approving in a matter of a couple of minutes. And upon final approval, whether that's one or many levels in your organization, that invoice along with all of those transaction details is now 
ready to have a transaction entry created inside of GP. So another thing to note about QuickTag then is at our core, we're a document management system. So we um, come to life on the additional menu here inside of GP where you can tag documents, view documents, and search documents across 79 different screens inside of GP out of the box just with our connector for document management. Now add the element of workflow that we just walked through together and we click on the work queue button and that's going to bring up a list of all of the invoices that have gone through review and approval. And I think I just made the system freeze. <laughs> but we'll check that here in a second. And it's gonna bring up a list, there we go, <coughs> of all of the invoices that have gone through that review and approval process. And here's the one that we're working with. Look, we can see the workflow comments, distribute GL codes, please approve. That's the one that we're working with. So you can see that it comes in to be created inside of the facility within GP that's related to this invoice. So we simply can review all of the detail here. I don't know if you noticed, but when I hover, I can see the GL codes. I can right click and view the document. Again, some of those final checks that AP may wanna do before they create a PTE into a batch. I could multi-select and say, I wanna put all of these facility, all these invoices related to this facility into the same batch and put them, you know, begin that process that way. For our demo purposes, I'm just gonna grab the one that we're working with and put it into a batch here. We'll put it in my, my mem and m batch right there and it's going to disappear. You'll see that invoice disappear out of my work queue knowing that QuickTag has sent it through the process and we'll come into the voucher here and all of the transaction data is going to be populated for us. The GL distributions will be there. Maybe I didn't click it enough. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, all the GL distributions will be there as well as the document that we routed for invoice review and approval is going to be associated with this transaction as well. So there's our PTE, here's our GL distributions, and here's where the magic of our integration with MEM comes into place as well. When I click on the, the drill down into these codes, the do to do froms that leverage the MEM setup are gonna be visible for you here as well. So when I scroll down to the bottom, you can see the do to do from already been created. So we don't need to print and route anything. We don't need to do any double data entry. <clears throat> The transactions created with the proper GL codes, and then when I come back to additional, I can now view that document because it is associated with this transaction using the quick tag connector and leveraging our document management function. So that was a really high level and fast walkthrough of quick tag AP automation integrated with binary stream mem. No trees were harmed in this process. We sent an invoice through digitally. We had it coded by the appropriate manager. We had it routed for approval, and then sent right into GP to have a payable transaction entry created. Now there's lots of other bells and whistles we could have demonstrated with that, shown email approval and, and other ways to get additional documents into the system, but um, for interest in the interest of time, we are going to move along the conversation. I'm going to hand over the reins to my colleague, Sean, who's going to give you a sneak preview as well of our quick expense solution that enables you to automate expense reports and expense receipts um, through an end-to-end -end expense management process as well. So you can also then leverage um, that under one roof from the same system, same provider. Sean, if you don't mind, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Great job. Thank you for the transition. You can see my screen, right? I can, thank you. Okay, perfect. So, um, you know, we've been partnered with Turnkey for a long time, and uh, chances are you have too, and so you've probably met me at an event or or certainly said it in another webinar where we've gone through some similar type things. Um, but just in case you haven't, just, uh, you know, real quick here, uh, you know, remember QuickTag is a document management solution, right, as Mary mentioned underneath the hood. So she talked about us, you know, being embedded at gosh, up to 79 different screens inside of GP. And so here I am in QuickTag, and I'm in kind of the main QuickTag system, what we call KTX. And on the left-hand side, top left-hand side, you see it says QuickTag drawers. What's a drawer? That's a repository where a document lives. Um, and so this, I have, in my demo environment, I actually have 61 drawers, as you can see there. So this is showing me that I am connected to 61 screens in GP. They've all 
We've created a corresponding drawer for every one of them. So as Mary showed you, you can see documents from inside of GP, but what if you're a user who maybe isn't a GP user and needs to see documents that are elsewhere? You can do that here. And so, the, so that's where we're at here in QuickTag. We're in the main system. Here's all the different drawers. I'm in the invoice drawer and I can see the invoices. Okay, so because this is part of the power of QuickTag that yes, we are an enterprise-wide document management system and we also have, we're embedded in GP. We have this purpose-built solution that Mary just showed you for AP automation. And hey, we have a purpose-built integration to binary stream multi-entity management as well. That's a big deal. I've been here for eight years. There was a time about seven years ago when we tried to do this with clients when we didn't have this thing, uh, we have this uh, MEM integration and it didn't work. So you, if you use MEM, you can't do AP automation unless the company you're talking with has a specific integration built like we just showed you. So remember that. Now, what else do we do? As Mary said, I'm going to show you our employee expense management tool. And this is, again, part of the Power Quick Tag, multiple solutions all under, uh, uh, under one system. So I'm going to navigate here from the top right-hand corner into a couple different places. The first thing I'm going to do is jump into the back office. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to click on Reconcile, and if you're an AP person, here's where the process would start. Uh, we can do, by the way, we can do this for both um, a corporate card, which is what I'm going to show you, or reimbursable. Uh, we're going to go with the idea that, hey, my company, we have an American Express account. We have, let's just call it 10 users uh, in, in our solution, um, in our company, and I'm the AP guy. I'm going to go to the American Express uh, website, right, for my bank card. I'm going to download a corporate-wide statement that has all users on it, and I'm going to upload that here into QuickTech, step one. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and, and, and do that. So we'll look at, uh, at Sean's. Actually, what I forgot to show you was, clicked on something too quick there. Um, and uh, let's see here, reconcile, select the card. There we go. So I can upload a new statement if I need to. So I would click on Add Files and browse out and go get my statement, okay? Just double click and upload it. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do that here. But what is the result of uploading that statement? Well, you get all the transactions brought into QuickTag. Now, in my, because this is a demo environment, I can only show you a view of one person at a time. But if, I'm, if, if this was a true real life situation, I was really the AP guy, then instead of just you know, one user, Sean, department manager with three transactions, I'd have all 10 users represented on this same screen. So a little bit imagine, if you will, with me right now. But let's say there were, there are 10 users, we all had three transactions, we'll keep it simple. Instead of three lines deep, this thing would be 30 lines deep, right? point is, is I've uploaded all the transactional data for the end users into the system, okay? And then what happens as a result of that? Well, automatically, a, a, a email goes out to every user letting them know that, the, that they have these transactions in there. I'm going to force one. You can force it too. I'm going to force it now and send it out to everybody. So Sean, department manager, is going to get an email here in a second letting him know his transactional data has been uh, has been loaded. Now, a little color code going on here, green and red, missing. This says, this is going to tell me I have three missing receipts. It's a little misnomer. What it really is, is that they're not matched yet. Sean, I'm going to be Sean, department manager. Throughout the uh, month, we'll call it, let's say I do an expense report once a month. You can do them however often you want. I gather my receipts as I travel and doing whatever I'm doing, right? Um, and there's my email notification. And so I'm putting receipts into the system, the actual images, right? I'm emailing them in. I'm using the QuickTag app that we have where I can just upload them right through the app and, and put them into my work queue. So my images will be in my queue, all right? And now AP has uploaded the data against them. My expense reports are due in a couple days. My expense report is due in a couple days. So I'm going to come in here and, and do it now. And so as you can see, this is telling me you have some missing receipts. Again, it's, it's more like I have uh, unmatched receipts. Okay. So let's go match them up. So I'm going to click over here now. I got three different instances of QuickTag open. That was the AP guy. Here's going to be the end user that's going to be doing this report. So now I'm logged in as Sean, department manager. I'm here in my queue, again, where I have sent my receipts into over the course of this month, right? I have three transactions. Here's my three receipts. 
So all I have to do is come in here and match these up. And here's what I mean. I'm going to click on the little dots there on the left, add receipt data. I'm going to come down here to my line item. I'm going to, um, now we are going to code this, okay? But as most of our clients tell us, well, yeah, but my end users can't remember GL codes. And if they, they get them wrong a lot, right? So this is the scenario. And we can do this a few different ways. We can't actually present GL codes if you need to, but because uh, some people do know them. But um, this is what we see most commonly is, hey, just tell me maybe department and expense type because they can remember that. So I do know I'm in sales. Um, and, you know, here's another list. I do know that this is travel. I'm going to type T, T, no, T, there, travel. Got it. Is this reimbursable? No, this is either reimbursable or American Express. Okay, well, this is from my American Express statement because that's how we do it here. And boom, there are is my transactional data. So I just choose from the list. This is a $55 receipt for a meal. I choose that from the list and the information gets entered for me. $55, comments, restaurant, and meal. The date is up here at the top for the header. That's really all I have to do. Okay, and then I just click this add button and I submit that one line. It's really that simple. And the beauty of doing it this way is that I now know that, hey, this is going to match up perfectly with date and with amount. Okay, so we're just going to kind of do a little, uh, I'm going to type S for sales. And we'll tab off that. I'm going to type, what is this, uh, travel. Again, T, 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 travel. Uh, reimbursable, no, nope. A, A for Amex. Okay, it is uh, my $300 one, double click, and add it. And you guys get the idea, right? Um, it's really that easy to do. Okay, add receipt data. Here we go, same thing. So we'll come down here, sales, expense type, travel, American Express, there we go. Double click. Hey, John, I just I thought of something as you as I was watching you do that. I wonder what's the what's the view look like for accounting? You showed us that cool, you know, red oh, and green. Oh yeah. Setup. All right. Thanks, Mary. This is Mary's yeah. subtle way of reminding me that I forgot to do this. <laughs> okay. Let's refresh this real so quick because cool. we haven't set that third one in yet. I'll refresh that look. I'll come back. I'll go to Sean and let's look at my pending statements. Oh, two are matched. So the point here is, is that throughout the month or as we're getting closer to, um, you know, expense reports being due and the back office now, I'm switching hats again. I'm back to Sean, the AP guy, right? I can come in here and refresh this and not that impressive with three transactions, but what if you had a hundred for 10 users, right? And you could see, well, gosh, we got it. We're, you know, there's still like 42 that are missing. And that's when you come up here and say, send missing receipts and you'll force a missing receipt email to go out, of course, just to those that haven't matched their receipts yet, right? So you know how it goes. You send it out at, at one point and things aren't due for two weeks and some people do it right away and some others of us <laughs> procrastinate and don't, right? And wait to the last minute. And so that's why you can manage this as it's ongoing. You don't have to walk around and remind people and send emails yourself. You just come here one time and it'll send a missing receipt report to every single, you press that button once and everybody in the whole company, if they're missing a receipt, will get their updated email uh, and a reminder. And also too, maybe it's a mistake. Maybe I thought I was done and I thought I had matched them all. Oh, I'm missing one and now I know, okay? So thanks, Mary. All right, so let's go back here to, let's put that last one in. We'll submit that and there we go. So now Sean, department manager is done. Right, I had three trans, three receipts in images. I matched them to my three transactions, and look at this. Look on my report on the right-hand side of things. I got my reports. There's, I, I didn't do that report for three hundred sixty-five dollars. Right, the system did it for me. It knows I only had three transactions in. Come back here, just for fun, and we'll show you that. Hey, look. Sean, is this done yet? Yes, they're all matched. Great. So the system knows they're matched. And so it did my report for me. It literally created my report. I did not have to do that. So all I have to do is come in here. Um, here's my report. I just see the header information at this point, $365. But I can drill down and see the individual images and make sure that we're, that we're good to go there. Okay. And, uh, and now um, I'm like, yeah, that's good to go. I approve of that. I can send for approval. So as the end user, I'm done. So again, let's be clear, as the end user, because that's you know half of where we're trying to create these efficiencies, what was my role? 
send my receipts in, the images of my receipts throughout the month, okay? And then come in here at one point and just match them up. It does a report for me, I review it, I send to my boss, I'm done. Really simple, low touch, efficient end user experience, okay? So Sean, department manager has sent those for approval. We're gonna click over here to our fourth tab in the top right. We're now logged in as Sean CFO who has no reports, but let's fix that. Let's refresh and there's one report. So here's the report, Sean CFO is the approver for Sean department manager. Um, he can come in here and now we'll actually have the, 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 the literal report that is created there. And so I can see um, the $365, I have the header information. Um, I can come in here and open this up and drill down into the specific receipts, no problem. I can see each one of them. I can approve at the header level or I can actually uh, open this up and look at this, approve or reject at the receipt level in case I like most of them, but there's a couple I have an issue with, right? So that's how easy it is to report. So I can just approve, exp reject, right? Look at the workflow history if I want. We'll keep it simple and just approve it. Comments are optional and away we go. Okay, now let's take a look at an email because we haven't looked at that yet. Um, here's what an email approval looks like. So this is either or, right? So as Sean CFO, I either did the approval like I just did in QuickTag, or I dropped in here, I just got it in my email and did it, right? So same thing, I have all the line items here, those three transactions, I got the header information, I can see it's for 365. If I wanna see the receipts, I click on this, and this is gonna drop me right back online to a report, the same report I would have if I was actually in QuickTag, but I don't have to be in QuickTag to see these, that's too small, make it bigger, there we go, that type of thing. So, so I can do my approval literally right from email. Most of us these days are receiving our, uh, our, our emails uh, on our phones, so I can literally be doing this from my phone as I travel, as department managers or approver CFOs uh, are frequently doing. So I just tap on the approve button on my phone, it sets up the email for me, I hit send and I'm done. Okay, it's that easy. And then the end result, you know, is really, it, it, I'm going to kind of just blow through this because it's really the same as what you've already seen. The end result is the same as we have with invoices. We're embedded off the additional menu in GP. We have a work queue right here. And so now I'm back to Sean, the AP guy. I'm switching hats again. So here I come, Sean, the AP guy, and I come into, uh, into the back office here, and I can see my transaction. So um, here we have... Uh, we have this one right here for $365, right? To, this is payable to American Express because that's who we're reimbursing. Um, and so all I have to do is, uh, is create this document. Let's create this transaction. And let's do turnkey. And uh, we'll just we'll put a date to that because my guess is we have um, a few turnkey batches in there, believe it or not. So let's put it to today's date and I'll take it out and there it goes. So it just takes that in and it creates that, right? Transaction for us. So let me show you. And this is really a very powerful part of, of this solution. Uh, 10, 8, 19, there it is. Um, because there, sure, there are other uh, expense management solutions out there, but the key to what we offer is this embedded integration, this getting the information out of that system into GP. That is a nightmare with some other solutions as I've, had, I've heard from other people. Look how seamless this is, okay? So that created this transaction, $365 payable to American Express, and watch this. When I go view documents, where's it gonna take me? Right back online to that online report, okay? So I'm gonna be able to see the documents, right and uh and the report online uh right from from gp okay so that's the beauty there um is that it creates that you know embedded but always and forever if i come back to this transaction i'll have the receipts and the report visible online right through gp okay so again that's the beauty of it um uh, and mary with that i think i will I should pass it back to you to kind of wrap things up yes please if you don't mind Okay, yes, well, change presenter to And Mary. while you're doing that, yeah, Sean, if you, oh, too late, but <laughs> had he clicked the show distributions, you would have seen that uh, translation yeah. directly from um, 
the GL codes from that layman term, you know, flap, flight, travel, sales, meals, whatever selection he chose in the interface directly into the GL codes, again, real-time connected with GP. So another valuable in, uh, integration step. Now, again, there's lots of other stuff that we could go into, show you lots and bells and whistles, but we're in the interest of time trying to really keep it to um, the, the story of AP automation with binary stream mem. Quick expense, use a mobile app to submit, reconcile, or do reimbursable expense reports all under one roof. And we want to share with you an example, friends, of many of the customers who have gone down this path. And you see just a sample of them here on this, what I like to call the family snapshot. <laughs> and you'll notice that there are a few right at the top of that list that are quick tag and turnkey customers as well. Uh, <laughs> top left hand corner top left hand corner there you go <laughs> the stanley cup champion st louis blues there you go Sean uh, was sure that was yeah right uh, at the top <laughs> i'm a st louis kid for anybody on the call that doesn't know that i know maybe some of our and some many of the turnkey customers are too so sorry yeah, yeah. I had to point that out no worries no worries you're <laughs> welcome blues. anytime to do that <laughs> so um and by way of example the one right next to st louis blues creative solutions in healthcare is going to be joining us at summit and doing a session with us on thursday at three o'clock and for those of you on the phone also a turnkey client also in the st louis area and also binary stream mem users as well as quick tag with the ap automation solution so um, you know we like to have the the story be very relevant and real for you as we've demonstrated for you here but we also want you to hear it from others that are your peers in the industry as well so join us at summit we're going to be in booth 701 and certainly we're open to your questions if we have time for those i'm going to turn it back to brad Okay, great, thanks Mary. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time, but of course feel free to submit those uh, here in the next few minutes or follow up with our email tomorrow that you'll get and um, you can ask us a question by replying to that as well. Um, I also did want to point out that we are offering complimentary consultations. We typically call these business process reviews, but it's one hour with our GP practice director, Diane. Um, if you've got a business process or operational area that you're consistently struggling with or spending too much time doing manual processes around in Dynamics GP, um, it's an opportunity to sort of flesh that out with us and learn what might be the best solution for that or the most cost-effective route, whether that be a workflow or an ISV solution such as uh, QuickTag here. And certainly we can um, tailor that discussion to be around your AP automation um, or the solution we discussed here today. So. You'll have a link to that in the webinar in the follow-up email tomorrow, as well as the recording and the link to the turnkey quick tag partner page as well, if you'd like to learn more. And um, I just want to thank everybody again for joining. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Sean, for presenting with us, as always. And um, until next time, I hope everybody has a great day. That's it for today. Thank you.